Let's talk about Ethernet IP media and components, okay? I'm going to give you a pretty basic overview of some things from an Ethernet media standpoint. And we're not going to dive at all into fiber optics in this video. So we're just going to keep it straight up on the, the Ethernet IP side. So we're going to talk about cable. That copper cabling for Ethernet is rated in several categories. Most installations you're going to see a CAT5E for, or better. And that's going to be your four pair, pair of cables. CAT6 is typically required for speeds of 1G or higher. Another cable consideration that you need to think about is the jacket itself. It's got to be able to withstand the temperatures, right, as well as contaminants. Let's think about it from an industrial standpoint. They can, there can be extreme fluctuations in temperature as well as things in the air, such as oils, that could affect that cable. So that, that jacket is so important. So then you have shielded cables, right, and they could be used in areas where you have those higher noise levels, you know, and that could be impacting uh, performance. And so things like that are really important to understand from a cable standpoint to make sure you're picking the right cable for the environment that you're putting in. Remember, it's an industrial environment. It's not residential or commercial. It's really important to remember. The second area we want to talk about is connectors. There are a couple basic types of industrial connectors. You have the IP65 and IP67 seal connectors, and they're suitable for Ethernet IP applications. They're designed for appropriate balance to minimize that crosstalk and limit that susceptibility to vibration. The first is you have a, you have an uh, encapsulated eight-way modular connector, which looks similar to the standard Ethernet connector. The second is a four-pole M12 or D round connector. Both are designed to provide that, that ceiling to an IP65 or 67 rating. Another variant of these connections is a bulkhead feed-through. Okay? This can be used to pass a cable through a surface like an enclosure door. So a lot of times you'll see these mounted on enclosures itself, control panels, where you're actually trying to get the connection from the outside to the devices on the inside. And there are guidelines that you can look and, and research online uh, because you have plastic and metal housings that are both available in this type of connection. The third component I want to talk about are hubs. And this is going to be pretty simple. Don't use them. Hubs are for offices and are not really used in the industrial setting. So we're discouraging you right here. They can, they can cause transmission retries or drops and they can increase jitter and all these things are bad for your industrial network. The fourth component that we want to talk about are switches. So that hub technology we just said, uh-uh-uh, they, that's been now replaced with switches, right? And these switches can move those frames simultaneously between pairs of ports at full wire speed. And that means each port can manage traffic at full rate of speed and minimize those collisions. That's a very, very good thing. And the switch segments that network into parallel dedicated lines to provide that contention-free architecture. So the switches, you, you have so many advances with that technology as, as switches grow and are being adopted more and more. You have things like uh, IGMP snooping, you have port mirroring, and all these things are very beneficial from, for uh, troubleshooting in the industrial environment. So getting your component and your media correct is so important in building a robust network, particularly on your journey to smart manufacturing.